Hello, Xinyu. Welcome to Deep Into Sleep. Hello. Thank you for having me today. So I'm very excited. You are the first therapist who are specialized with creative arts therapy, especially music therapy. So、um, myself, I'm not familiar with that, and I'm sure my audience are very curious about that too. How about you introduce us?、Uh, what is creative arts therapy in general? Sure.、Uh, yes.、Um, first of all, I'm very excited to be the first creative art therapist or even music therapy here to participate in your program. So, creative art therapy is a a form of therapeutic intervention that uses active engagement of art to stress address a person's、uh, person individualized goals, such as treatment for behavioral or developmental disorders or、uh, mental emotional disorders like that. So, so as long as this、um, this form of therapies is going through an expressive art format, which is to explore a self expression, and we can call it as a kind of creative art therapy. Oh, so is what's special about music therapy within this? Sounds like these two are not exactly the same. Right. Correct. They are not exactly the same. I would say a lot of people will categorize music therapy as one kind of creative art therapy. That I forgot to mention that creative art therapy that including music therapy, art therapy, which is fine arts, through painting and stuff, drama therapy, dance therapy, movement therapy, or poetry therapy. So that you can see all the therapy formats is through a self exploration and then self expression through art. And、um, and the music therapy, of course, is as a part or kind of art, is utilizing music as a tool for interventions.、Um, but in in the music therapy sessions,、uh, I would say relationship. The relationship between the clients and the therapist is most、uh, important too. That's other than music.、Mm. Is that in music therapy? Is that Uh, clients mostly listen to music, or they will create music or use music in a way to express themselves. Really, really love your question because you're correct. Both of them are all very commonly used by music therapists.、Uh, your what you're talking about is more like active music ma- making process and passive music、uh, making. Not making. Receiving passively,、uh, which would include listening to music, or、uh, but if I say let's make music together, let's improvise. If I give you an instrument, if we write a song that talk about your life or express your emotions, that would be active music, music therapy.、Oh. I see. So there's different、uh, specific types within that.、It、sounds like very flexible. You can、uh, deliver music therapy. Multiple ways. That's true. That's that's true. And the way we choose to how to deliver this treatment is highly individualized, which means everybody's treatment plan will be tailored, and to match their goals and to match their cultural background, their personal experience. Yes. Oh, really cool! Is this music therapy、uh, able to be delivered through telehealth, or it had to be in person? Well. Taylor Health and Music Therapy. I personally never heard of it before COVID. Oh, after COVID, I became one of the. <laughs> yes,、um, before you know the dynamic when two people sit together face to face, it's not replaceable by anything.、Mm-hmm. But when COVID hits, there's no other option for us. So people started to trying to explore how to deliver it through Taylor Health.、Uh, By this point, a lot of intervention can be delivered, but also a lot of cannot, for different reasons. Most of them are technical reasons. For example, sound synchronization.、Oh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like、uh, the music therapists have to be very tech savvy to make some of this happen. <laughs> Which gonna be really difficult. <laughs> It is difficult. So we really wish some、uh, software developers can, you know, create some apps can solve that problem. Oh, so what kind of clinical setting you work at, and what kind of clients you are seeing day to day to really benefit from this treatment? 
Yes, um, music therapy that can work with people with all ages. To me personally, I work especially with people with neurocognitive disorders, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, those people that I work for the most of the time. Um, because music has a very specific way and special way to help people with their memory and also to help them to decrease the stress that comes with unfamiliarity to the environment. Um, the places I work at, I work at Wartburg is a, it's a medical, it's not a medical center, I would say it has nursing home, assistant living and independent living. Um, what I work with, most of them with people uh, that have memory loss mm -hmm. or adults with dis uh, developmental disabilities. Oh, wow. I remember I had some sleep experts before talking about working with um, this population and their sleep problems. Absolutely. So I'm curious, right? When you work with them, uh, how, what have you noticed? How does it benefit from music therapy? Do they uh, listen to music? Like from my simple idea, do they listen to music, but uh -huh. then they will forget and then they listen again? Use that as a way to treat their mood or cognitive functioning? Absolutely. Uh, so let's not even talk about people with Alzheimer's first. We all listen to music. Mm -hmm. And I personally haven't found anybody who doesn't love music, but I do have people haven't find the style of music that they will love yet. Mm. Uh, music is such a unique gift that I would say that human has because as kind of animal we are, um, not all the animals have the privilege to enjoy music. So. When we listen to music, our brain starts to respond to it. Um, that's why when you listen to music, and maybe we will talk about this later because it is related to sleep, because music gives you two major effects, sedate you or energize you, mm. right? When you, when you wanted to sleep, some people will some put some very sedative or smooth uh, music that help them to feel relaxed, right? And also, if you, if you go into a club and you cannot help to move around with the beats, and that's, that's entrainment, and we can talk about it later. Um, so yes, because of this, even people who has Alzheimer's, which is an impairment in cognition function, their function of receiving music and enjoying music is never get affected. And there's another very... I, I would say it's very nice to see this uh, thing to see is some people will get disconnected from the environments that they are in. They may forget their friends and families, but they never forget the music that they heard when they were young. Mm. Um, I personally actually just had experience not too long ago <laughs> that I was passing by somewhere and I heard a piece of music that I was listening to when I was in high school in China. And that brought me back immediately to everything that happened. So music help us to remember things and to recall certain things. But that's one thing we help with Alzheimer's patients. Another one is some, some of the patients display behaviors like agitation, aggression, uh, a lot of times is because they feel unfamiliar to their environment. And think about this. If you woke up in the morning one day and you look at the room, you're like, where am I? Why I'm here? Uh, wait a second, who am I? You gotta get scared. And when people get scared, they're nervous, they're anxious, and they could get agitated. Mm. So um, music provide a familiarity to them by bringing them back to their memory, providing something they are already familiar with, which is the tune that they heard. Um, that's another thing. Another, uh, the last point I want to mention is uh, music boosts our mood mm -hmm. that I'm sure everybody probably somehow kind of have the experience, so I don't have to explain too much on that. Uh, scientifically, because uh, music help us to release dopamine, uh, that is the reason. Dopamine is what makes us ha feel happy and motivate us to do things. And that is why uh, traditionally and historically, people will do drumming before war started. Oh, right. Motivation. Mm. 
Yeah. Yes. Well, definitely. I actually never thought about all these different aspects of music, right? I have a lot of clients, especially teenagers, when、mm-hmm. I talk to them about coping strategies,、right. and the coping strategies they've been using on their own is mostly listen to music. Right、mm. when when they are、Smart、upset,、kid. when they are you know depressed, anxious, they would run into their room, put on some music, to really help them、um, drift away from the thing bother them. That's right. And yeah, and I think they all choose different type of music based on the situation, based on what they like. And some, like you mentioned, yes, it's more energetic, really bring their mood back. Some of the music they choose are more sad, right? To be consistent、okay. with how they feel in that moment. Yes.、But、I never really thought about music. Actually, it's soothing. Help people feel soothing in a way by bring us back to the familiarities, and it's tied with memories, which totally makes sense. Yes, it's amazing to see.、Uh, I think that is actually one of my major rewarding to why I'm choosing to do this.、Uh, I've remembered that I can I can help people to answer my questions, a、uh, meaningful questions, while they might not be able to respond according to question for years. But after we engage in activities that use music that、um, they are really familiar with. They'll be able to answer. Sometimes they were able to、uh, even be more connected to their surroundings.、Oh. Wow! So I can see totally. It can be such a therapeutic tool to help them engage and、uh, yes. um, offer more information. Right. So music、uh, help with、uh, Alzheimer's is one of、uh, a very small, I would say, category. What music therapists do? Because as I said,、um, music therapy really works for people with all ages with different kind of problems.、Um, so yes, I particularly do this. Also, have other colleagues they will work with, such as kids have、um, autism, autistic kids, ADHD kids, to ex- help them、uh, for socializing, socialization improvement, communication skills.、Um, And also with people who adult with motion problems, like what you said, adolescents with stress, anxiety, or everything. Yes, music can use.、Um, like you said, something that、uh, I found very interesting. People all choose different kind of music for different reasons. So let's say some people choose a sad music. I would say they have to be comfortable to that music first. They embrace the sadness. And they use the music to get connected to themselves and express their personal feelings.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, for people who use live music, they wanted to kind of feel distracted from whatever they're experiencing right now. So that's another skill: distractions. Also, a shift of mindset.、Uh, so yeah, that's why I say young kids are smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. Sounds like depends on in that moment, right? Are they choosing to trying to face the problem, to accept their own emotions, try to process the emotion, or they are trying to run away from all those overwhelming emotions in that moment, and want to have a peaceful mind, just want to avoid a little bit, and their choice some somehow can hint the direction they are going. Yes,、um, I would say personally that I use in both ways.、Um, sometimes when I felt okay, I'm too overwhelmed for what kind of emotion that I'm not able to process until it goes down a little. I would distract myself、mm-hmm. and、uh, temporarily, and then I come back to process it. Oh yeah, that actually can be very healthy, right? I, I、um, remember psychologically、um, when we help. Clients deal with a lot of stress. Sometimes、mm-hmm. we educate them. Like brief distraction could be very healthy if that situation is too much to handle. It's too overwhelming, and、exactly. you gather your your thoughts. You need some time and space, so it's okay to distract yourself. Absolutely, but it's gonna become problem if that's your only strategy, and you <laughs> avoid all the time. We all tell ourselves that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It's mostly easier at the moment, but you will find the problem come back to you. 
Yeah, it's gonna be more in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Then you mentioned the music therapy and the sleep, so I'm definitely curious about that.、Mm-hmm. So yes, music could be soothing. I actually I treat insomnia patients a lot,、mm-hmm. so a lot of them try to find something soothing and calming at night when they are on bed.、Mm-hmm. Music is definitely one thing a lot of people try to use,、mm-hmm. right? And some works for them, some not. So I'm curious how like music. A music therapy could really help people with sleep. Right.、Uh, thank you for that question.、Um, I love how you ask. You said some work, some、uh-huh. doesn't work, and I wanted to start from there.、Mm. Music for sleep is not for everyone, but it could be applied to a lot of people, and to, could be very helpful if it was used in the right way.、Uh, so the first thing I wanted to mention is. Um, there's no certain kind of music will promote sleep. It's very generic to think that way, because everybody's preference on music is different. That means people will feel comfortable or uncomfortable hearing a kind of music. So, in order to fall asleep, we need to feel comfortable. We need to feel safe, right? You're not gonna fall asleep when you are nervous and stressed, and that's why the first step. Is to feel safe and feel de-stressed. The way we can do that is to provide familiar music.、Yeah. So, if someone find find a playlist online and start to listen to it and wonder why it doesn't work, that's the reason. Because that's not your music. That's not the music will make you kind react in a personal way. It is the music might. Probably in the right tempo, right speed. Probably less rhythmic or let less percussion in it. It might help with people to just calm, but it doesn't have to bring you a sense of safety.、Oh. Uh, as a music therapist, when they work,、uh, oh, of course, every therapist have the style. Is、um, if I work with people who has sleep disorders or sleep problems. Uh, I will use the first few sessions to address, to think,、uh, to educate or inform the nice sleep habits that you know I'm talking about. So we're gonna right, and then I will probably think about talk about. Let's find out the reason why you think you can't sleep.、Mm. Are you depressed? Are you going through any trauma? Do you have Alzheimer's or or a lot of you know? Do you have diabetes or things?、Um, And we find a reason. Some of the reasons need to be addressed in the long term. Let's say childhood trauma, PTSD,、mm-hmm. uh, and then after that, or concurrently at the same time, we were started to collect the music from this individual, and I'll ask them, "What kind of music make you feel calm? What kind of music make you feel comfortable?" Right, and.、Uh, Of course, we're not gonna judge of any kind of music. If you feels like I want to hear disco, like let's bring it on, <laughs> let's try it first, right? So,、uh, first use the、uh, the the familiarity of the music to induce a feeling of safety, and then later on, what I'm going to do is I would remove the lyrics from the music if there's lyrics in it.、Oh. Because our brain will naturally respond to stimuli, and language it's a kind of stimuli.、Mm. You listen to the music and has lyrics in it, and some of the lyrics even even kind of reflect your feelings.、Mm. You'll be like,、uh, and you start to think, and you start to think and overthink, and start to have a lot of thoughts coming from your mind. You're not gonna sleep that way, because <laughs> what you wanted to do is relax. Not to think, not to be active. So that's why, if there's lyrics, I'm going to take the lyrics off. And then what I'm going to do is to change the meter, which is the speed and the accent of the music.、Mm-hmm. I'll slow it down.、Mm-hmm. I'll slow it down. That would match this person's natural movement of the body, such as heart rate and breathing. Wow. So I've heard people. I've never do the、uh, research or or experiment myself, but I've heard some people mention like they love music between 
uh, six to eight, eight beats per minute, because that's our heartbeat usually. Mm. Um, yes. Um, so in, in summary, any sound that it's predictable, oh, I forgot to mention that. You want, you want to, the music to be predictable and rhythm and pattern usually have, uh, usually is predictable to us, to our brain. Uh, why predictable? So it doesn't stimulate you to think about new things. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And our brain loves predictability and patterns. We love patterns. Think about the thought patterns we always have, especially those malfunctioning ones, right? Uh, yeah, yes, we really love patterns. And so as long as you find music you really like, provide you a sense of comforting, repetitive, not too loud, not too fast, predictable, that may be the start to go. Wow. Yes. And once you start it, and you may want to make, to add it, re-add the list and everything. With working with the clients, uh, those, those work are all done by the therapist. Mm. Uh, but we'll never be done only by the therapist. I like it's that. a client's, yeah, it's a client's list and we're just going to manipulate it. <laughs> right. Wow. Awesome teamwork. I actually never thought about all those work involved. Sounds like, you know, whoever listening, right? Sounds like if you have difficulties falling asleep, don't just go online, search or 100 songs help you fall asleep. Not those, right? Should go with something you are more familiar with. As a music therapist, I will not suggest for a generic uh, way to solve your own personal problem. Yes, by for anything, yes. Right, right. Wow, so a lot of those you, you mentioned totally make sense. Our brain needs something predictable. We need to feel safe, familiar, mm -hmm. less triggering. Exactly. Try to have something not make us think too much, mm -hmm. not trigger too much emotions right before right. sleep, right? All those are so important. Right. I think you use the method, uh, music method, to really mm -hmm. pass out a lot of great information to people. Very similarly to how we treat insomnia in mm -hmm. a non-musical way right um, yeah yes um you're right uh you mentioned that maybe it's not a good idea to go online and find a sound list but i understand finding a music therapy or sit down with a music therapy might not be like doable to everyone mm. so um if you happen to don't have access to those services what do you can do there's all still uh, tips that i can can let you know to provide oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, tip about how to choose music, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so as we, as we said earlier, we're going to start uh, finding the music that's more calming instead of stimulating. Uh, for example, you don't want to find the music. When you hear that, you cannot stop yourself from tapping your finger, nodding your head, swing. You don't want music like that. So <laughs> even though, like. yes, even though you really like it, maybe, maybe when you wanted to wake up, you use that music, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that's actually stimulize our, uh, <clears throat> stimulate our brain to be more active instead of calm down. And that's the opposite of what you wanted. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is choose the music that's more melodic um, and an accent. Uh, people, when, what do you mean more me melodic or accent? An accent. It means maybe not percussions in it, maybe not drums, the rhythm mix, maybe not brass, brass instruments mm. in it. So the music, I would say strings, soft mm -hmm. piano. Oh. or woodwind, or even ambient music, environment music. Oh, okay. uh, yes. The third is the music will be, I will highly recommend the music to be compatible to the rhythm of your breath. Mm. Uh, so the way you can find out that is you put the music on and you're trying to breathe with it. If you, if you find yourself trying to catch up with the beats, 
no, <laughs> that's not right. You don't want to show ah, ah, catch up in the beats, right? Mm -hmm. And if you uh, find yourself have to wait, <clears throat> excuse me, to hear the next beats, that means music is too slow. Oh, so not slower is better. It's like have to be consistent to match yourself. Match your biological uh, movement. It's very similar to those noises, white noise, pink noise, all different kinds of noises. Mm -hmm. The noises, the frequency that match our brain activity. Mm -hmm. So match and compatible, I think, is the key here. Oh, wow. So sounds like it would be better if someone can find a... Uh, uh, music therapists like you to really help them tailor the, the treatment to themselves. But if they really don't have the access, they can still use the, the strategy Absolutely. you share to try it at home. It just yes, can be just, some trial and error. <laughs> exactly. Oh, one thing I do want to mention is it doesn't, it might not start to work right away. Mm. Averagely, it takes at least four weeks to start to see the effect mm -hmm. your body also need a process to to get used to it and able to benefit from it oh, okay so give it some time give don't be too time. rushed i do have some people who cannot sleep well they are so rushed with any strategies <laughs> right if i give them a relaxation strategy they use it for one night they're like nope this does not work for me <laughs> <laughs> i still cannot sleep with it but that's not the point. Any strategy is like this. You, you're not supposed to use it to, to knock yourself off immediately, right? Exactly. And the more people rely on any of the strategies, the less likely they're going to fall asleep. That's right. That's correct. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So music can be so, um, you know, so interesting and so complicated, actually, to it's, work yes. for us. Yes, music, uh, so so far we we're talking about music for memory loss and music for uh -huh. sleep. That's, there are so many other things that we can talk about that music can do. Uh, for example, one of the reasons why um, we wanted to match the rhythm is because a phenomenon we call the entrainment, which means our brain will automatically match the thing, the surroundings, the audio uh, from our surroundings, for example. Uh, if you, oh, Fox, this is a, I think it's good. Marching band. Mm -hmm. Why marching band plays a certain music that's useful marching? Mm -hmm. That's entrainment that promotes us to rhythmically move around. Um, so because of that, uh, the entrainment, since our body will match the music automatically, use that function, we can treat people with gait problem walking problems, balance problems, after brain injury or stroke or any kind of that injury trauma. Yes. Wow. Well, I never connect all those because I, I was trained in a lot of those assessment centers to help people diagnose, right? Figure out right. their function level. But mm -hmm. for treatment, it's always like a blank area for me. It's a question mark for me. But mm -hmm. sounds like music therapy can be one method to really help out. Uh, yes, yes. I, of course, I believe that. <laughs> That's why I'm studying it. I do believe that I've, I've seen different effects from different people. Mm -hmm. I will never say one kind of method is good for everyone. But for music therapy, I would say it is rare to me to see people who are not benefiting from it. It's just because people all have different tastes on different things. Mm -hmm. And again, people love music and music naturally helps biologically help us yes yeah wow so any like impressive stories you ever experienced when uh, since you've been working in this field so far that make you really believe into music therapy further mm -hmm. um if i say what make me believe in music therapy is my personal experience with it oh. I use music to help me with how I feel and a lot of other things when I was a kid and I never know what I was doing until I start to study this. Oh, I was smart doing that. So, oh, I was stupid doing that or something. Um, oh. Yes. And um, one of the things that I found, I love to use example to for people is since I work with people who have 
neuro disorders, um, or they have, um, let's say, one of the very common population I work is people who has aphasia. Aphasia is a loss of language using after stroke. Mm. Uh, because when stroke happens, the area that's in responsible for our speech usually is broadcast area in our left side of the brain got impaired or damaged. Mm. And that's why you've seen people after stroke, they lose the ability to, to talk. Well, when people was doing music and when you sing and what you see, you see when we're doing music, there's a lot of executive functions we have to put on our fingers, body parts, whatever. Also, we have language in it, mm -hmm. lyrics. So when we receive and making music, it's an activity that requires two atmospheres of brain to commun communicate, to cross and communicate all the time. So, um, those communications will provide new pathways for the neurons. Mm -hmm. What can happen is you will see a person not be able to see anything and after music therapy treatment, they could start to talk in the de uh, degree. Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the things that I haven't seen, uh, my, me personally haven't seen other therapy form and can really do. Cause let's say speech, therapy or speech pathologists will teach the person how to communicate instead of how to regain the ability of speech. Mm. Wow. So for example, speech pathologists can also teach you, you know, use your lip to communicate, but you don't have to make a sound out of it. Mm. Uh, use your body gestures to communicate. Mm. So it's, it's, it's more like how to communicate instead of how to communicate with verbal language okay yeah yes sounds like how to cope with this situation not really treating the the symptom and recover uh yes kind of because you know all neural uh brain damage is not reversible right. so treatment is more like an improvement of the current function mm -hmm. yes cure it might not be realistic to a lot of things. M maybe some is realistic. Uh, some TBI, a traumatic brain injury, a, a her story of cure, which is amazing. Yes. Um, but for progressive neurological disease, no cure so far. Right, right. So that's one of the fascinating case study. Usually I would tell people because uh, that's kind of unique. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I should ask this earlier, but so sounds like you've been kind of like born with some self-exploration and really attachment with music yourself. That's awesome. So what originally led you into the field of music therapy? What made you choose it to, to study? Yes, um, I studied music as a kid because I, I just, I will never see my life without music. I was born in a music family. So music has kind of be part of my life since I was born. I cannot imagine that my life is not with it. So inevitably, I just started to study music. And in the, in the beginning, I started how to play a music instrument. And I went to school for it mm -hmm. and learned how to play, to be a musician. Mm -hmm. While I'm doing this, um, I realized Muse, the power of music to me personally is not only for like entertainment or being artsy or whatever. It helped me to express my feelings when I play. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, also seen my, uh, my friends also do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when we were in the college, you can directly tell, tell if a person just went through a breakup or something mm -hmm. <laughs> by the music they were playing. Uh -huh. um, that's good. Yes. So I realized that music has something else on me and I wanted to explore if it's, if I am the, I'm the one who's special or it happened to everyone. Uh -huh. um, and that's when I started to do research. I started not with neurological music uh, therapy stuff, but more focused on how music helps us with our emotions. Isn't that's what people's uh, firsthand experience, right. like music can, can change my emotions. Music can make me happy or can make me sad, mm. whatever it is. So I started from there and the more I read and into it and the more I found how amazing it is. And I really, really love to use music 
to help people with whatever difficulties that they've been challenging with. And that's what make me music therapy. Wow. That's so cool. I never really um, research and know music therapy very much. So I've been looking forward to this conversation a lot. I really think a lot of different methods, right? Mm -hmm. could, could all put together to help people because mm -hmm. everyone is such a unique individual. Like I always say in my podcast, uh, sleep is such an individual thing. Exactly. And the intervention is going to be very different from person mm -hmm. to person. And I feel like for psychology, for mental health, for a lot of uh, disorders in general, it's similarly the mm -hmm. treatment, the intervention, what's going to work for which person is going to look so different. Absolutely. I will say no two music therapy sessions could ever look the same. Mm -hmm. It's a, cre a cre creative process. So every time you create something, it's not going to be identical. And also what to create, how to create, what we wanted to gain from that process is highly individual. It depends on what is person presenting problem, why does this person find us, what is uh, the gender of this person, what's the stage of development, what is the personal's experience, culture, background, language, a lot of things. Wow. So each session is individualized. And that's one of the key of what making music therapy, music therapy. And that's also the key to differentiate uh, music therapy that you can find online that was called music therapy. Um, how are they different with the actual music therapy that provided by a therapist? Oh, wow. Okay. So we have to really be able to distinguish what are the really legit ones, what is- I would say so, right? yes. the, the real ones. I think every field has a problem, sleep field, psychology exactly. field, right? Like it's hard for the customers to really find the, the correct help mm -hmm. that really work for them. Yeah. So since we are talking about that, oh, but before that, I want to reflect back to what you just mentioned. It sounds like music therapy is like a team um, creation teamwork creation session. I love that. I <laughs> love, I never heard anybody. I'm going to steal that from you for now. <laughs> I really love this. Yes. I love how you put it. Yeah. Teamwork creation. Yeah. Because when you mentioned that, I just have this image, this beautiful image that you and your client, you both are creating a piece of art together. And it's like a flower growing up. And okay. it's so beautiful and the, the client can benefit from that and got nurtured by it. Absolutely. You just reminded through to uh, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, I have a group of people, they are adults with developmental disabilities like Down syndrome. A lot of them is really severe disabilities that absolutely have no way to, to take care of themselves. Or some of them are, it's not even um, responding to people when they're asked a question or something. I conduct drum circle, drumming, improvisation with them. And if you sit out, standing outside the door, you will not imagine who's playing. In, you will be, oh, that sounds a group of musicians now. Wow. It's a group of human beings using their natural ability to create something that's beautiful. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Such a meaningful work. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, I really love it. Yeah. yeah. So if our audience really, you know, after they listen to that, uh, to this episode, they want to find a legit certified, well-trained music therapist around mm -hmm. enough to really mm -hmm. seek help, how right. can they find this kind of great resource? Right. Uh, as a music therapist, me, myself, uh, taking referrals and those referrals are given from psychiatrists, uh, mental health uh, field like counselors or social worker. So people can talk, try to talk to your psychiatrist or let's say, but since music therapy is still a growing um, field, mm -hmm. so it's not super, super well known to everyone. And if you happen to be very interested, but you don't have anybody know, others know about it, what you can do is go AMTA, which is American Music Therapy Association.org, just AMTA.org. They have a list of credentialed music therapists 
or there is another website, it's for CPMT, uh, Certification Board for Music Therapist. So you could type your zip code and find in your area what are where the therapist, um, yes, what do they do? And you, you can find their email and then contact there. Okay, great, great to know. I know the certification is very important because that uh, at least help us to know this music therapist is well trained and received a legit years of training. So they know how to provide great Absolutely. service. Yeah. Absolutely. Just like any kind of uh, therapy, uh, a powerful tool will have powerful uh, limitation too. If I say music can be really powerful to access your feelings, but if it's used not in the right way, it could make you re-traumatize something. The experience mm -hmm. are like something you, you're not supposed to or doesn't help at the moment mm -hmm. or leave you in the state that your problem is pre it's bred up, but it's not solved. So you absolutely want to find a trained uh, therapist. So a music therapist is actually, I would say a therapist, a counselor, a psychotherapist, and depends on what else to specialize they do. Uh, it could be people who really knows a lot of um, neuroscience mm -hmm. or people know special ed, depends. So yes, they have a lot of trainings to make them a music therapist, yes. Wow, great to know. I feel like you really guide me like start touching the door of this field. I don't, I cannot even okay. say I am entering the door to know more, but uh, great to know this resource. And even as a psychologist myself, right? Locally in Bay Area, I don't mm -hmm. really know any certified music therapist around me. Mm -hmm. So I am gonna have to check out those websites you mentioned and yes. to find out what are some resources around that so we can do the referrals for our clients. Ex exactly. Maybe. I know few. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> you know. uh, yes. Music therapy is, uh, as, again, it's kind of small field. So it's easy to find connections. Uh, the West Coast of music therapists might not be, the th therapist, I would say, I've heard more therapists that in the West, uh, East Coast. Um, and more job uh, positions in East Coast. Like here in New York City, uh, all, almost all the major hospitals has music therapy departments in it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be happening everywhere in the country. Right, like I worked in many hospitals before. We never had music department in it. <laughs> yeah. I never so, worked with any uh, music therapist myself. Yes, yes. It's not a lot of music therapy around. I think it's, 8,000 something total in oh. United States. Yes. Okay. Well, that's more than sleep specialist right now. <laughs> we oh, only yes. have 400 or up to 500 now sleep expert, board certified sleep expert. Uh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Sleep is so important. Yes. I know. So that's why you see a lot of so-called sleep coach on the market but not a lot of board certified sleep experts. So the field is still going right now. I see, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Xinyu, for uh, giving us so many great information uh, to the audience. You're so welcome. So glad to have a chat with you here. Yeah, I'm so glad. And if any anyone has, uh, whoever listening, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to let us know. I will pass those to Xinyu. And uh, um, do you have uh, like your hospital's website or anything? If any audience want to connect with you, is there a way they can find you or the clinic, the hospital you work at? Sure, I can leave my, my email to uh, Ishan later and we can do that. Also, the website of the place that I work is called uh, imnf.org. It is the Institute for Music and Neurologic Function. So from there, you could find a lot of uh, maybe resources even to help you explore more to how to get yourself some help. Yes. Great. Yeah. Sounds like a very specific um, resource can benefit a lot of people who really look for that area. Absolutely. Great. Yes. Yeah. Thank you to you for all this time and your experts. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for watching our videos. 
or listening to our podcast. If you like our show, please feel free to subscribe, like, and share it. If you have any questions or feedback, we would always love to hear from you. You can either email us or leave feedback on our website at mindbodygarden.com, or directly under the YouTube video channel. Thank you very much for your company today, and hopefully to hear from you or have you with us next time.